What's up? It's Matt, and here's a disassembly video for the Nighthawk X6 router. Um, this will require a Torx bit, and there are numerous screws that you will need to remove before you get this open. I've gone ahead and taken all of them out, but I'll show you where most of them are. There are multiples back here that hold the back panel on, and then there are are another four here and there's also one underneath this label once you get those out it just slides you just push it towards the back and the back panel will come off as with most newer routers the motherboard is only held in with mechanical retention there are no screws to hold it in what I found interesting on this board is that the antenna pigtails use SMA connections on the board already. Most of the antennas are directly soldered onto the board. So having these pigtails, um, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's a little bit of a step up compared to most of the other routers that I've taken apart. You can look back at some of my earlier videos for the Linksys. Um, E1200 and 300 uh, disassembly and mod and you can see that they use um, antennas that solder directly to the board so um, all you need to do to get the board out is lift the black tape up off of each one of the antenna pigtails you can pop the pigtail off the board it works relatively easily I'm going to go through and take all these off real quick and show you what the other side of the board looks like. And it is rather interesting. I have not seen a router with this component already on it, which you'll see here in a second. And it's rather um, impressive how large this component is. Um, this is supposed to be a high-end router with a lot of features um, and be the best of the best according to their forums and what their support site. This router has it all and it, it, unfortunately it doesn't. I was very let down by the performance of this. It, it underperforms against my Asus RT N66. Um, I have a 105 megabit connection here. Uh, on my Surface 3 tablet about 100 feet away, the speed test, it was just upsetting. Um, I wasn't getting very much at all, throughput at all, compared to the Asus router. Um, and the price, you can get the Asus, uh, I think Amazon has it for around $130 right now for the Asus brand new. This is still around 300 bucks from Amazon as well. I would personally still just go with the Asus update the firmware on it to the newest firmware set it up and that's all you can leave it alone but I have all these disconnected there are no screws for the motherboard to be held in but there is a ribbon cable that is connected from the motherboard to the LED lights on the front if I lift it up you can see the ribbon cable underneath there I want to turn around and disconnect the ribbon cable real quick and then I'll show you what the board looks like after that to disconnect the ribbon cable, you have to be real careful. The zip socket just has, you know, the typical flap that flips up. And the ribbon cable pops out, <clears throat> and then the board is free. So I'll go ahead and move this. But look at this motherboard. Look at the heat sink on there. That's a, it's almost the size of my hand, and that's pretty much all you see um, is the heat sink for this router. It does run extremely hot. Um, to the point where they probably should have thought about some type of active cooling instead of passive. Just the heat sink inside, it's, this is considered passive cooling with just airflow. So if you have this uh, router installed in a rack or in an entertainment center in your office or in your living room, this thing is going to, is going to get extremely hot. Um, they probably should have thought about some type of active cooling where they had a low RPM fan our low noise, high RPM fan, 
um, running either all the time on low RPM or monitored the temperature and ran when it needed to. So I think this is going to be an issue for some people is how hot this router actually gets. So keep that in mind when you're buying stuff like this. Do some research first. See what other people are running into as far as the issues they're running into. And really take that into consideration when you go to purchase something that's this expensive. I mean, $300 for a router, that's not cheap. So um, I hope this just assembly video helped you in some way. It goes back together in reverse. The di most difficult thing about putting this back together is the ribbon cable. Just take your time. Um, use adequate lighting so you can see the proper orientation that the ribbon cable goes back into the um, LED slash button control board right here. And just reconnect all of the SMA antenna connectors in the order that you took them off, which they can only go in one spot. And you'll see each identifying spot on the, on the router's motherboard when you go to put it back together. Put all the screws back in and you should be ready to go. Why you needed to take it apart, I'm not too sure. I take apart um, pretty much everything. Um, maybe you would be interested in switching these antennas out to some higher decibel antennas. That could be a possibility. But um, that's all i got for you in this video. If you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them down below. Uh, and if you can, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe as well. That helps me out uh, more than you guys may know. Uh, like when you subscribe to the channel and like these videos and comment on them, it will allow me to do uh, more of these and show more products and disassemblies and mods for the products. And it also will allow me to continue to do giveaways for items like this. So um, go ahead and do that. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay.